The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink Community TV, its sponsors, or partners. cooking experience. Hi, welcome to Mama G's cooking experience. Today's episode, we are going back to basics. And what I'm gonna show you today is how to take bones, make them into broth, take that broth, make it into soup, and take that old bread that's sitting in your cupboard and make it into croutons to give yourself an awesome lunch. First things first, I wanna thank Seasons Pharmacy for hosting me here today. As you can see, I've got this awesome apron. Thanks, Pharmacy. So, what we're gonna start off with is we're gonna talk about bones. Some of the best broth that you can get today is homemade. The best thing to get to the homemade broth is to get your own bones from the butcher or from the store. But I'm telling you, if you go to any butcher, Torini's, B&D, even Costco might even get them for you. But if you go there, get your own bones, and it takes no time, guys. So we're gonna start off with a little bit of pork bones here. You don't need lots to get a lot of product. So I have some frozen pork bones. Now there's two ways in which uh, you can make broths. You can go raw bone, which is what we're going to do today, and, and get yourself a clear stock, or you can roast your bones with garlic, onions, whatever vegetables you have, get it all cooked and nice and brown, then take that and put it into your stock, and it'll give you a darker broth first, things like French onion soup, um, um, beef stews, uh, or stews in general. But today I want to make cream of leek soup, so I want a light broth. So let's talk about broth. Broth is good for you for so many reasons. It is, and it has an anti-aging uh, collagen inside the bone and where these, um, where the cartilage is. And, and once that the water uh, breaks it down and the heat breaks it down, it makes your stock almost like jello, gelatin, right? So once you have it that consistency and you're starting to eat that, the collagen in there is good for your joints, it's good for your skin, it's good for your hair, it's good for your nails. But most importantly, this collagen and the, the nutrients that you get from these bones are really important for gut health. It helps you digest, it helps you maintain, it helps you absorb all of your good minerals and vitamins in which you are trying to eat from your fruits and vegetables. If your gut's not good, it's not going to absorb anything. So, back in the day, we would take these bones and we would put them in a big pot and we would fill them with water and we would let them boil for uh, three or four hours to extract what we need. In today's modern world, we are graced with such products like the Instapot. And I'm not gonna lie to you, at the beginning of Instapots, I wasn't a fan. It's just because I didn't understand them and I, I, I thought that's not how we do things. But I've been subjected to one and now I know how they work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my bones, frozen, whole, all like this, and I'm gonna put them inside my Instapot pot. Now your Instapot pot has measurements on the inside. So I'm just going to take these apart. Well, that one's not gonna fit in. So I'll put these two in. And this one, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do it in a pot on the side. So, I have my bones in here. French Canadians, growing up, we're talking 100 years ago, used to do this kind of preserve. This is called des herbes salées, salted herbs. So, you take all of your fresh herbs that you've collected from your garden, celery, onions, 
carrots, you dice them up all nice and fine, and you pack them with tons of salt. Pack, pack, pack it full of tons of salt, and every time that you try to season a broth, a soup, a, st uh, a stew, uh, those kinds of things, use this. You, it already has your chopped vegetables in it. You're going to use salt anyway. You might as well use your own salt. So I'm going to put two good heaping tablespoons of this in here because remember it is salt. But I do want the flavor of the herbs. So in here we have parsley, thyme, uh, marjoram, and rosemary chopped up in here as well. You should smell. It smells so good. So I've got those in there. Always put Oh, some black pepper. Don't put it, uh, the ground one, it's, it's going to leave too peppery of a flavor. You want just a nice subtle, but not too much. Put about six or seven cloves in there. Cloves and pork go hand in hand. And like the aromatics that come with it are just, they're beautiful. And they're, they You'll, you don't recognize that flavor, but that's what that flavor is. So I have a teaspoon of mustard seeds in here, and I'm going to put three bay leaves in here. I'm going to top it up to water. Three, there we go. Now I put cold water, not hot water, as you want the um, impurities to foam up at the top, and then we'll just cut the impurities off. So I'm going to put some water on here, and then I'm just going to put it in our Instapot. You can also, at this point, if you're like me and you have a, a, a bag of onion peelings, celery peelings uh, in your freezer, uh, just you can throw that stuff in here, but because I want to do a soup with it I don't want to put too much in there. I want the leeks to speak for themselves. So Click it to on Press the soup and let that happen on its own. This should take about half an hour's time Which is nothing back in the day. It used to take almost two hours Mama's cooking experience Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. Thank you and welcome back. This segment, what we're going to show you is how to do the basic uh, cream of leek soup. Cream of leek soup has always been important to me as it's always been a nice, light, summery kind of soup, but it's also a winter comforting soup. It's the best of both worlds. So let me talk to you about how to clean a leek. We all go and buy leeks or we grow our leeks and we're all very excited because while well, they're beautiful, they're, it's like if a if an green onion and a, and a celery had a baby, in my mind it's the leek. So when you buy your leeks, you usually have leaves that come out. So the one thing that has always remained consistent about leeks is leeks are always dirty on the inside. Doesn't matter what you, what you, how clean your garden is, maybe if it's a hydroponic garden that'd be different, but leeks are always dirty on the inside. So the best way that I have learned how to clean a leek is to cut the base off. Make sure you're cutting a good chunk off because if not, you're still going to have the core here and you're going to have to keep cutting and cutting and cutting. Just cut a nice half inch uh, uh, slice off of here and you'll be fine. Now, take your knife and go down the middle just like that. You're going to want to crack it open and you're going to see just by moving the insides a little bit that there's always dirt. See, there's dirt there, there's dirt up here. So take your leek like this and each layer, clean it underneath the running water. So I'm gonna cut up both of them so I can clean up both of them. I keep my leek soup very simple. Some, um, I like the leeks to speak for themselves. So what I like to do is just honestly, leeks, potatoes, stock, cream, you'll see. So I'm just going to give these a quick wash here in my sink. Gentle water, 
because you don't want the dirt to kind of fly everywhere. It's going to uh, make a mess and then your job's gonna get bigger. So yeah, just make sure you rub it all off. Try to use warm, warm to cool water. If you use too hot of a water, your vegetable is going to um, wilt. It's gonna take away from its, its sturdiness and you don't wanna do that. You want it still to be crisp and crunchy when you bite into it, even after it's cooked off. Leeks is one of the most underutilized vegetable out there, I feel. Uh, people feel that it's only good for soups. But honestly, I've had roasted leeks before and they were just super fantastic. I've had them chopped in salad, like made into a, a coleslaw. That was really awesome as well. And they're super easy to grow. Like honestly, they're super easy to grow. You know, doesn't need tons of sunlight, doesn't need tons of water. It's not super finicky. It's hardy, it's like a squash almost. So, you're gonna see that you have some dry ends here. Just give them a quick slice off. This is the kind of stuff that I would put in a bowl and, and, and add to my freezer, my freezer bag for stock. You would want to put the leeks into a, like a dark stock or even a light stock, but try to keep the greens kind of out of there. Like they'll make it too, it could, it could really stain your, um, really stain your stock. I take all the really dry ends off because they become chewy in your soup. Yeah, nobody really wants that. Nobody really wants that. And there. See, that took no time. It looked like a bigger job than what it actually was. There was no fast timing the show. We're good. So I'm going to take this off and I'm going to put these here for two seconds. I'm going to add some potatoes. So. I have four new white potatoes here, which were grown here and in Sudbury, and they are still really firm and really uh, nice and white and fleshy is nice. There's no elastic, like no, um, you know, sometimes they become squishy. It's not like that at all. So we're just gonna peel them off nice and quick. Again, you can keep the, the potato peels for stock, but beware. If you put potato peels in stock, your stock will become cloudy. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. So if you're looking to try to make consommes, don't put potato peels into your stock. Also, little tip, if your potatoes are green, if the skin looks green, they say not to eat them. But over the years, what I have done is I have cut the peel deeper past the green. It's been fine. It's been fine. So having this much potato, like it doesn't seem like a lot of potatoes, but we're not using the potatoes as a as a um, a piece on our on our on our spoon. We're using the potato as a thickener for our soup. Got lots of knives. So I'm gonna turn our heat source on. We've got it to medium high. Always use a good quality butter. I'm very partial to Farquhar's butter. Uh, it's the creamiest, it's not so salty. It's, it's got some really nice flavor to it. And honestly, you know how some butter has lots of uh, liquid in the bottom, like when you melt it down, there's lots of whey in there. This one's got a, a small amount of it. So get your butter melted. You can use olive oil. 
you can use pork fat, you can use beef tallow, you know, whatever you want to use for this, but I prefer butter because it offers a natural creaminess that you don't always have to look for when you get it from um, cream. You know, it doesn't always have to be that way. I'm doing a nice rough chop on my potatoes because it doesn't matter, they're gonna be uh, whizzed into a creaminess for the puree of the soup. Okay, so I'm getting my potatoes in there. I'm going to chop up my leeks and get them in there, and I'm just going to fry them up. Try and wrap your leeks into like a, a cylinder and hold it tight. Keep your knife to you and just give it a nice chop that gives you kind of like half moon circles. Now you're not going to want to add all of this leek into your pot because you're going to want some of it to stay back for finishing touches at the end. So I'm going to get all of this in and I'm going to start frying it up and when we come back I'm going to show you how to finish the soup and how to make croutons for a fully finished product. Mology's cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria. 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. Thank you and welcome back to Mama G's Cooking Experience where we're just finishing up our Back to Basics episode. So I'm going to show you a few little tricks of the trade. I'm going to show you how to make your own croutons and then we're going to finish up the soup and then today's episode will be finished. So I've taken a hala bread which I had made a few days ago and it's starting to get a little hard. So I put that there, but first, before I get into the bread cutting, I want to show you how to peel garlic. Everybody has their own way, but in the industry, this is how we do it, generally speaking, if we're not buying peeled garlic. You peel your garlic off the bulb, you take your knife, you put it flat, and you just smash it down. Just give it a little smash, it'll come apart, and look, the peel just comes right off. I'm going to use this knife because you don't want to use the little core bottoms at the bottom. The reason why I'm smashing up garlic is that we want to make a garlic butter, a seasoned butter, for our croutons. You can do just plain roasted bread into the oven, but you're just not going to get a nice flavor in which you are looking for. And when it goes, especially when you're using it for soup, you're going to want a little flavor, a little crunch to your soup. That's what I like anyway. I like a little bit of crunch back. So you have this all crushed. You take your knife and you just briefly give it a rough chop. You can do fine chop. You can throw it into a food processor. You can, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> if you want, you can use the garlic paste. You can use the granulated dried garlic salt that people use, but I prefer the fresh taste of real garlic. So scoop it up onto your knife. Now, over here in this pan, a cast iron pan, I have a quarter cup of butter melting in there. While that's melting, I'm going to add a tablespoon of dried parsley. I'm putting it in now so that it absorbs some of the oil so that it softens it up once the bread goes in. It'll attach to the bread. I'm adding my three cloves of chopped garlic to this and I'm just going to let this come to a, a little bit of a, a, a simmer because I want the garlic flavor to spread through the butter in order for it to spread through our bread. But Mama G, what size is a crouton? Well, babes, the size of the crouton is the size that you want to make it. So my rule of thumb is this, finger thick slices of bread. 
So I look about how thick it is and I give it a good slice of bread. This here is about seven slices of bread, which is enough for a large Caesar salad. So I slice my bread into three and then I just slice it into the size of dice, right? This looks like the same size of a dice. We're all good. So you take your bread that's all chopped up. Before your garlic starts to turn colors, you throw it into your pan, making sure that the pan is completely covered. Now if you're pressed for time, you can always take the butter, transfer it to the bowl, mix it all up, put it on a cookie sheet, and throw it into the oven. But this is a way nicer product. So you're just gonna fry it up. The best bread to use is day old, like hard, stale bread, but not so stale that it's super dry that you can't really do anything. You know what I mean? Sorry, I just burned my finger. There we go, coat the bread nice and even. Turn your temperature down to low and just let that do its own thing. Give it a stir once in a while, but you should be good. Now, I'm gonna finish off the bread, the soup here, sorry, while I get rid of the bread. Doop. So I've taken the stock in which we have started and I strained it off and I added it to our soup. Here is a beautiful looking light colored broth that took color from the caramelization of the leeks and the potatoes down here. And I have to tell you, I wish that we had smell -o vision on this TV because this smells amazing. Seriously. So now I'm going to take my immersion blender. Yes, you can take this soup. Yes, you can eat it just like this, but it's not how it's meant to be. It's meant to be creamy and delicious, and that's what we're gonna do. So you take your immersion blender, submit, submerge all the way into the bottom, and just whiz it all up until all of your potatoes and all of your leeks are completely blended through. Doesn't take long. Make sure that your potatoes are cooked all the way. Use a fork or a knife to pierce through them. And that way you can finish it off. See, multitasking, easily done. Making sure your croutons are stirred. You can take this soup and put it into a, a, a blender, but I wouldn't recommend putting it into a food processor. At this point, I would add my 18% cream. You can use 10, but I'm telling you this, if you use 10% cream, don't put the pot back on to boil because it's gonna separate, okay? So stick with the 18, or if you're bougie, you can use the 35%. So while this is going, I'm gonna add about 500 milliliters of 18% cream. And there we go. We've got some nice soup right there. Now you saw that I took some uh, leeks earlier and I put them to the side. I just gave them a quick fry and I'm gonna add them to my soup because I like the crunch of, of the leeks. So here you have it, my friends. We have some beautiful leek soup. We have some nice croutons. I'm gonna put it in a bowl. I'm gonna grab my ladle. There we are. Let me get this in here. We've got some nice leeks ready to go. 
Gonna put in some wonderful fresh croutons for crunch for our soup. And there you go, my friends. Thank you to Eastlink and Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria for this episode of Mama G's Cooking Experience Back to Basics. I hope you enjoyed yourself and I am looking forward to seeing you next time.